we head over here uh, to our Sounders. And yeah, man, I mean, I talked about it at the head of the show. It's not a loss, but, you know, with where you're at right now, with the run of form, with the way the table is stacked up, with how morale has been, you kind of need wins. Uh, and they got half of a win. They got a draw. They split points with the loons in Minnesota. Uh, this is a tough one because Nico Ladero assisted a, a nice, beautiful header to Yamar Gomez Andrade in the first half. He had a nice header. The, uh, the Sounders were up at halftime. You're thinking, oh, you know, maybe they're going to be able to put it together. There's some concerning things here for sure that I'll talk about here in a second. But hey, maybe they're figuring it out. Maybe they're putting it together. Um, no. They would give up a uh, a late equalizer, and it's kind of funny, kind of cruel, maybe not funny. Um, Yamar uh, was going to clear a cross into the box, and he headed it into his own goal, past his goalkeeper stuff on Fry, uh, and would tie things up. So Yamar uh, was responsible for both goals in this match, which is is not it's not great. Uh, so, you know, oh, goodness, that thing is still going on. So, yeah, um, it's not, not the worst outcome that could have happened. It's not the best outcome that could have happened either. Um, the troubling statistic is that the Sounders defenders of Yamar Gomez Andrade and Alex Roldan had better attacking stats in terms of shooting than the Seattle attackers, which isn't great. Another thing that wasn't great was that Brian Schmetcher, head coach Brian Schmetcher, basically promised that there would be changes to the lineup, as the lineup has been mostly the same people, just in different fonts and just in different forms. Um, and he rolled out basically the same lineup once again, and he made his substitutions way too late once again. So, yeah, man, I don't think there's only one person that can be uh, have the blame set upon. A bunch of people are putting it on the coaching. A bunch of people are putting on individual players. I just see a lack of heart from a lot of these guys, really. Uh, lack of urgency. You know what I mean? It kind of seems like we're treading water, even though with this draw, the Sounders moved up a, a spot, and they're third in the Western Conference right now. So, yeah, it's a bit wild. It's a bit frustrating, but here's to hoping that they can figure that thing out uh, sooner rather than later. So uh, their next few matches, they've got two matches over the course of the upcoming week. Um, next, August 30th at Austin FC with a 5.30 p.m. Pacific time kickoff. They are headed straight to Texas um, from Minnesota. They, they did some decent things in Minnesota. Let's hope that they can take the good things that they did in Minnesota, or the, at least the decent, um, and push them over to this match against Austin. Austin has not been the team that they were last week. So it'll be very interesting to see what takes place for them in this matchup against Austin. I say that Austin has been the team that were last year. You could say the same about the Sounders. So their other match this week, September 2nd, hosting the Portland Timbers here at Lumen Field with a 7.30 p.m. Pacific time kick. Uh, you could argue that everything started to go downhill with the Sounders when they lost 4-1 to one to Portland down at Providence Park earlier in the season. Um, you could also just say F Portland because it's the Timbers and that's the rivalry. Um, you just hope you hope and hope and hope that the Sounders get up for this game. It's a rivalry match. It's arguably one of the bigger matches of all the season. Um, and they need to be paying attention. So, you know, it's going to be a really big one. That one, especially Austin. Yes. I'd say that all of these matches, the close of the season are big, but the Portland one for obvious reasons just feels so much bigger. So, we move here 